Hey, do you ever find yourself stuck analyzing trades like this guy? You're not alone. Today, we're going to take a shot at breaking those chains of analysis by paralysis. Let's get started right now. Let's talk about the indexes themselves. Let's take a hard look at the spiders to start off with. As you see, we had an initial sell off this morning on the spiders in the S&P. It dropped down to just short of the eight day moving average. This has been a very strong move as we've moved up to new highs. It's almost back up to the high we hit on Monday. At the same time though, what makes this drive higher suspect? The volume is dropping. We're reaching the highs on the weekly TSI and the weekly market forecast where we typically will get a rollover now, it doesn't say we're going to go into a huge correction. However, what we're seeing here is a rally attempt on lower volume. Oftentimes, that does not wind up well. So on the S&P, if we break out again, I will look for a pullback in between the 8 and the 20. If we fail here, watch for a bearish reversal signal. And in fact, if we finish this candlestick today like it looks like now, We'll have a hanging man, which is a bearish reversal signal that needs confirmation pushing to the downside. Do your emotions ever swirl together so that you become frozen by paralysis by analysis? If that's the case, then you're not alone. But I want you to know something. Oftentimes when we get stuck by paralysis by analysis, we freeze but it triggers eight potential emotional responses everywhere from confusion, fear, even to guilt. I didn't realize that guilt could kick up with maybe kicking yourself in the rear for not being able to take action. But today, Anil and I are going to tackle the major trading issue face-to-face. -face. Neil, what about the situation of paralysis by analysis? One, when you've been faced with it, how does it make you feel? And then what are some of the steps you've taken to avoid it? It has happened to me many times. So sometimes it uh, still happens. But the issue that I'm facing comes in actually stock selection. Because I have the system set up where I'm looking at the present situation, the backtesting past situation, and future right. situation. And those three, the present past and future don't always line up. And when they don't line up, uh, that's when the anxiety begins that which one is going to be right. Uh, okay. Uh, but as time passes by, I think what I came to, I got to be very clear in my mind is what do I really want and how do I balance that? And once that thing got balanced, the uh, situation okay. got a little better. And that balance in the simple terms comes in writing down the rules. What, what the rules are, what if, when this happens and that happens. And once I got it documented, then I don't spend that much time on it. It just is. So what's the frequency of you reviewing your rules just to refresh in your mind so that you don't get caught up in paralysis by analysis? Now, I keep a printed copy right in front of me uh, of the rules. So it's helping me all the time. Excellent. For me, paralysis by analysis, it comes up to a couple of different things. It triggers pain points that all traders have. It kicks me into emotional decision-making that can result in making impulsive and compulsive trades, which is never a good place to be. I'm always reminded of what, I think it was either Einstein or Freud. One of them said that when we become emotional, our IQ goes down. And I could definitely vouch for that because when I get emotional, I make dumb mistakes in my trading. Other th things that can cause paralysis by analysis is a lack of time for the actual trading. That's why I suggest to people, put on your trades after hours. And then lastly, just the fear of making an incorrect decision. You hit on that a little bit, uh, Neil. And then the lack of clarity and confidence to follow my rules, even though I know my rules work very uh, very well. And with Autopilot Trader, the way we address it, of course, is by educational. We help people to develop their rules and 
it provides, it also provides a precision entry point, which is a specific, these are the patterns you're looking for to get in. And I'll leave a link down in the description on how to get a hold of the PEP routine. Our pre-flight checklist that we send out to our premium members, it lays out exactly where the stop losses are, where the profits are, and what specific stocks we're trading. And it also takes care of our risk management. And then one of the big factors that helps with paralysis by analysis is having a community of other traders around you. And that's one of the things we provide with the autopilot trading service. I love providing solutions. That's why we've got well, in paralysis by analysis, because it can really walk a person up very succinctly. Here's that first trader that we were looking at. He is so frozen by paralysis by analysis. He literally is. Okay, the Russell. The Russell? And like I said, last week, I was so enthusiastic about the Russell. It's like you just washed your new car and you park under a tree and a bird poops on it. That's the way I felt about what happened with IWM. Really great move off of last week. A rally attempt looked like it was going to on good above average volume. And then we get Tuesday and pow, drops down to the downside. Really ugly, ugly when the CPI came out, but it's done a really nice rebound right back up into the resistance that we have up here at the, about the 205 level. With that in mind, how do we trade the Russell or the IWM in this case? I certainly don't buy it while it's up here. I would look for a pullback back into these moving averages. However, if we fail to get above this past resistance here, this is just a rejection that could send us all the way back down to the 50-day moving average. What are the positives that we see on the Russell right now? The positives are, one, we're above all the strong moving averages, the 8, the 20, the, the 50, the 200. We're above all of those. At the same time, though, we're right up against long-time resistance, and then there's another level of long-time resistance that is up here, which is the past high from several years ago, and that's up at 212.25. And Neil, that's what I'm looking at on the Russell. Yeah, that's right. They said poop on my car. That's exactly how I felt after the Russell and IWM fell like a turd from a tall cow. So what about the NASDAQ? Did it do any better? The NASDAQ continues to move in a good direction, but it basically came right down in between, perfect entry if you were looking for something, right in between the 8 and 20 day moving average and pop back up. Note what we have here is the TSI is finding support right here on this 20 line. And oftentimes that's an indication that, hey, we're going to rebound back up and take back off. However, we have to treat this after this gap down, that this is a rally attempt to see if it can take out that high right there. If it fails to take out that high, then it could be a symptom of a weaker market taking place in the long term. Over on the weekly charts, what do we have? On the weekly charts, we have the TSI looking like it's putting in a double top. Same thing on the uh, market forecast. It looks like it wants to put in a double top also. So am I buying the NASDAQ right now? No, I'm too close to resistance. I'll look at it if we retest down here. I'll buy here. And if I'm in it, I'll look to perhaps cut my positions down a little bit if it's up here. We are currently in TQQ for our premium members. And so that's looking pretty good. What's your thoughts on the indexes, Anil? And what is your triple screen telling you? Triple screen is still staying strong. And particularly also in IWM, we had a buy signal last week on the daily. And that is still active in spite of the thing we had last Tuesday. So but basically, triple screen is holding well in uh, daily as well as weekly in, on all the indices. Okay. So it's holding well. And I, like I said, folks, it's not time to just sell. 
at the same time, we're seeing signs like over here on the weekly chart on the NASDAQ or the Qs, that's a hanging man. A hanging man is a bearish reversal signal that needs confirmation. So it's given us some clues. But fortunately, TQQQ, we're in up about 22, 23% on that. So it's doing well. That's for our premium members. So let's go ahead and jump from this. Where are we going to go now, <laughs> Neil? I'm, I've got three displays working here. You know, it's time to just take a look at what we uh, have been doing this year so far. We dropped a little bit. I had a, a pullback of about 4% from last week, but we're still outpacing all the indexes very nicely. Hey, if you're looking for a great routine, this gives you a easy to follow routine. It's called the Precision Entry Point Routine, and it's available on my training site. And I'll put the link in the description on that. It's a good foundational approach to applying the autopilot trading service. Hey, our journey is just beginning. So if today's odyssey or today's trip did spark some flames within you, please remember to subscribe to the channel. And there will be a video that pops up here shortly that'll take you to some more training stuff. I did a full length video on Tesla. And then we're offering some new stuff. Every Wednesday, I'll be putting out a live stream. I'm going to invite you live. It'll be totally unabridged. You can ask me anything about trading. I will answer it. If I don't know the answer, I won't blow smoke up your skirt. I will basically say, I don't know the answer to that. We can go find the answer. What that Wednesday's for is to show you what the final hour routine is that I follow sharing that simply to help people develop their own routine. Remember, market secrets are reserved for those who seek simplicity. And there's a sophistication of simplicity that can be applied to life. Will you be one of them? I want to remind everybody that all the materials we do present are for training purposes. Traders should always be able to trade any new method prior to the risk of their own personal capital. Past performance is not an indication or a promise of future performance.